On today's show, Duck Duck Decoy. G&H makes the only decoy made entirely in the USA. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this, Americans spend $30 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. That's where we come in. Made for the Outdoors. Made for the Outdoors is presented by Warner's Dock. If you're a waterfowl hunter, you've probably heard of G&H decoys. G&H has been serving hunters for over eight decades and are still going strong here in America's heartland. We're in Henrietta, Oklahoma to see how their decoys are made for the outdoors. G&H has been in business since 1934. The company was founded as a result of national legislation. In 1934, President Roosevelt, FDR, signed what's commonly known as the Duck Stamp Act. Part of that legislation said that it was now illegal for hunters to tie a little string to the leg of a duck and put it out in the water to swim around in front of your blind. You had to use artificial decoys. Company founder John Kozalski was the first to mass market and produce artificial decoys, eventually under the name G&H. Spoiler alert, that's not John Kozalski. That's present day CEO Ray Penny. I guess I was the guy that had the crazy idea and uh, I was the guy that, that thought maybe we should try to do this. So I'm the guy in the front office that's trying to continue to get it done. The crazy idea he's referring to, buying the company. Up until two years ago, Ray was just a G&H customer. I knew they were an excellent product, a superior product to anything else that was on the market. But as time went on, I stopped seeing G&H in the stores. And I kind of wondered what had happened to the company and was working as an attorney and uh, had a case down in McAllister, which is just down the road, and happened to just stop in here and discovered that the company had fallen on some really seriously hard times. So myself and, and uh, one of my childhood friends got the idea that maybe we could put an ownership group together, maybe we could try to resuscitate this thing. So we started trying to do the math and you know figure out whether or not it was possible to actually make decoys in the United States in a way that would make money and keep the doors open. And that's what they did. Ray assembled a group to purchase G&H and hired a team to revive the company. One of those people being director of operations, Clint Barnes. My family worked here. My grandmother worked here many, many years ago. But when I was a kid, G&H was such a big name. If you were a duck hunter, you knew you had made it. You know, it, it was the brand to have. I handle everything on the inside. I do the shipping, receiving, taking orders, customer service, making sure the wheels keep moving. A little bit of everything, including helping me make a decoy from scratch, starting right here. All right, so we're on the factory floor. Any good product starts with a good raw material. What are we working with? So this is all HDPE pellets. All of our floating decoys start with this. We have a mixture of virgin plastic mixed with regrind. Any scrap plastic that we have goes back so we can continuously use this. We're pretty low on waste on plastic sources. So you get this product here, and I see this, it's kind of disappearing. So it's got a vacuum hose going up. It funnels up into the hopper of the machine. All these will be on our blow molding machines. This will probably last us half a day to a day, depending on what product this we're whole, running. This whole thing, just yeah. half a day? Yeah, depending on what we're running, the product we are, and depending on how, uh, how many we're running a day, how many machines we're running, so. Wow, a lot, a lot of materials, for sure. I've seen a lot of different molders. 
What is a blow molder? What does it do? So the blow molder will actually take the plastic in and it actually blows the hot plastic into the mold of our form. And it comes out with a finished product. So what is their role here after that comes out of the machine? We have the operator here. As the machine spits the part out, he's getting it out. He's cutting the part from the form. And you can kind of see we're running heads today. He actually cuts those out. We'll have to scrape them down, get any excess plastic off. He slides them over, and he does any finishing parts for the hole so it can attach to the decoy. There's a lot that goes into it. It looks pretty simple, but it's, uh, it's pretty tedious, and it has to be done a correct way, or else we have to scrap all this and regrind it and do it over. The whole thing is like a meticulous art project. Yeah. Trimming sounds simple enough. What do you want? He says he wants a little off the top. Yeah, I'll need my own special pile here when I'm done. Put a little more pressure on it. Oh, you kind of have to go hard. That's not looking so good. He's got the alfalfa. It's a stray feather, I guess. Harder than it looks. I might be taking this one home. <laughs> the body of our decoy is formed in the same way as the head. Raw plastic is loaded into the blow molder, and it comes out looking like this. Our decoy is shaping up. More from GNH when we return. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Warner's Dock, Aquarius Home Services, Ice Castle Fish House and RV, Flow Trailers, and by Keystone Light. Keystone Light, always smooth. Celebrate responsibly. Welcome back to Made for the Outdoors. Here in Henrietta, Oklahoma, GNH decoys set themselves apart from the competition in a couple of ways. We're the last major manufacturer of a decoy that still operates completely in the United States. Still manufactures all of our products here. We don't outsource anything, we don't import anything, we don't have anything that's made outside of, of this building. Made entirely in the USA, and the other, durability. We have some proprietary processes that result in a decoy that's extremely durable and lasts for a really, really long time. We're not the most expensive decoy on the market, but we're also not the cheapest. You can go spend more money or you can spend less money, but you'll end up replacing those decoys in two or three seasons. We hear from customers routinely all the time, and I mean, don't take my word for it, you can, you can find this on with a Google search, but people hunt over GNH for decades, not years. Our decoy molds are finished, and now it's time for some paint. The next step, base coat. Once the base coat is set, the decoy moves on to the art station. To the painters, a decoy is a blank canvas. Currently, I'm working on the green wing teal pin. I really like these. They're smaller, but they have smaller details on them that I really like doing. For painter Samantha, her interest in decoys goes beyond paint. Do you hunt? I do. You do? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Since I was little, we'd go up in the woods and go deer hunting every morning. Head painter Lester is a true artist. Lester is the head of the paint. He's very artistic. Some of the new designs we did, he created. It varies depending on what we're doing, depending on what part we're painting, what color we're using, but uh, weekly it's usually around 150 dozen. That's nearly 2,000 decoys. Let's see if he'll let me paint just one. Taking a seat in the painter's chair. How long have you been painting? Since I was a kid. Okay. Um, I've only been here for maybe about a year or so. 
But you're an artist. Yeah, I actually am, other than here. You forget how much little detail and how important it is to the actual final product, like having it done properly. Right, it's, it's a lot more that goes into it than a lot of people realize. All right, but you're gonna let me do it today. Yes, like I said, I've already done the hard work for you. I've already traced, all you gotta do is color within the lines. Okay. Just the button on top is what makes the paint come out and okay. you, you can twist this here to adjust how much paint at a time. The difficult part is getting comfortable holding it. Lester may as well be an art teacher because today, I'm a novice student. I'm ready. <laughs> Giving it a go. Oh boy. So if you're not quite comfortable, which I'm sure you're not, then the sword bursts are good. It's my nerves. <laughs> there you go. I mean, but I don't want it to get like... At, at, least, you're, at least you're careful. That's, <laughs> that's all about it, so that's good. Actually, it's really good. Whatever you say, Lester. <laughs> oh my god. There you go. Just like that. Once the decoys are painted, they come here, the drawing room. This is where they cure and await inspection. While our decoy dries, Clint is going to give me a history lesson. Wow, this is cool. So a lot of these decoys do not look like what we made or we're making here today. Tell me about what's going on here. So this is actually what got G&H into the business. These are old paper mache uh, shell goose decoys. We've got the old wooden stake uh, that they used. So they're very brittle. And it's kind of amazing how they got started with all this. It's almost 100 years old. Yeah, I mean, this, this was done in a garage you know, 89 years ago. Okay. It's very, very sentimental to us, but for 90 years old, that still looks pretty dang good. Over the years, decoys have been made out of everything from paper mache, to cork, to hand carved wood. With any other industry, you get breakthroughs in material, different advances, but it's amazing to see the difference and how far it's come and realism and the material quality. It's a time, time capsule, line. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's amazing. We add our own decoy to the timeline when we get back. You're watching Made for the Outdoors. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. See, that one's good. It only took me nine. They're done. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Crane Belt Premium Beer. Finishing Trades Institute of the Upper Midwest. Horn Dog Maps. And by Ace Solid Waste. Welcome back to Made for the Outdoors. When the new ownership group purchased GH in 2021, it came with challenges. Well, the transition period related to a challenge in itself. For example, we didn't have any dealers when I got here. So we've had to go through and look up old dealers, look up new businesses that are in the waterfowl industry, make those contacts, build those relationships from scratch. Ben Half's main job is to reestablish dealer relationships, but he's also an integral part of innovation. Make sure you capture me with like more of a masculine stature than me in every episode. There's always good ideas out there. You have to be careful not to chase the good idea fairy and get off course. I think our long-term plan is to never be afraid of innovation, never be afraid to try something new. Ben and Ray are working side by side on a new product the G&H Duck Boat. The boat project has been one of those innovations. It was one of those things that we thought, how can we do something different? And so we've got this boat that is roto-molded. It weighs less than an aluminum boat of similar size. And the nice part about it is that you can really accessorize the boat and you can put things on or off of the boat depending on what it is that you're trying to do. So in the wintertime, it can be a great duck boat for you. You can put a blind over the top of it. You can attach a dog ladder to it. You can do all these things. In the summertime, you can strip all of that hunting stuff off of it. And mine has a polling platform and I can take it down to the coast and catch redfish with it. 
It's kind of a Swiss Army knife of boats. While exploring new ideas, G&H's main focus is still perfecting the decoy. <laughs> On the factory floor, our decoy has reached assembly. We've made it to packaging and inspecting, but we still have a little bit of assembly to do. I'm here with Hunter. What's the first step here? First step will be putting eyes in. Just put them in like that. Okay. Then you put your hand right down here. And you just push the eye in. Pop like it that. right in. Yep. All right. Come here, Doc. Oh, God. Did that go in? Yep. Oh, all right. In there. I feel like this step is what brings them to life. There we go, I heard that one click. It's alive! All right, to the sandbox, now what happens here? Now we grab our funnel, and fill it all the way up. Okay. And we just put it in the oh. keel, and let the keel all the way fill up, and just go to the next one. That's pretty simple. So just shake off yeah. the excess. Just shake it. Here's the hard part putting in these plugs. Oh, God. Get them on there about as flat as you can. One easy tap and one hard tap. All right, one easy, one hard. I think I can do this. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. See, that one's good. It only took me nine. All right, let's try that again. That was better. One more, there you go. There we go, three. Okay, I'm getting better. All right. Then you tap them together. Shake all the sand off. Shake them off. Yep, and then we throw them back on the rack. And just like that, they're done. Our decoy is ready for the hunt. The decoys are bagged and shelved where they await shipping. Most of the time, this time of year, we're in our busy season, so nothing really sets around. Everything is getting immediately boxed up and shipped out to a customer or one of our retail stores. But if we do have access to something, it gets stored in our warehouse. So if somebody does order, we can go get it and send it out that day. We've shipped Canada, Alaska, all over the country. So anybody that needs decoys, reach out to us and we will make sure you get them. More from G&H when we get back. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Magnum Research. Central Boiler. Hunt Worth, and by Guy Metals. Welcome back to Made for the Outdoors. G&H Decoys has made quality decoys for nearly a hundred years. Here in the original shop, we turned raw materials into this masterpiece. But for the folks here in Henrietta, their work is much more than a job. I've always enjoyed being in the outdoors. There's something about being in the outdoors and sort of unplugging and disconnecting from your daily life. I think a lot of people probably say, you know, it's, it refreshes you, it rejuvenates you. I don't know if it's so much the hunting, I just love being outdoors. There's a lot of stuff that I get to see that nobody else ever gets to see. There's a lot of times when I go hunting, I don't care if I shoot anything or anything, or even if I see anything, it's just being out and it's a good way to relax, a stress relief. There's just something about being in the woods that, that just calms me down. I don't remember exactly when I started hunting. I've been hunting so long and for so many different things, I can confidently say I'm a hunter as a person. Like many outdoorsmen, a passion for hunting also means a passion for conservation. For me and others at this company, conservation might be the biggest piece of the whole puzzle. It's extremely important that hunters buy licenses, by the tools of the trade that results in financial assistance for all of the agencies around the country that have a hand in conservation. Whether it's lands management, whether it's law enforcement, you name it, if it's involved in that, the money is generated typically by hunters. 
we also look for opportunities where as a company, we can maybe provide an experience that generates fundraising, that turns into donation dollars for some of the major players in conservation. GNH still has a ways to go to meet their goals. But if all goes well, they'll be making decoys right here in Henrietta for centuries to come. Everybody who's here believes in what we're doing and wants to be here and wants to be a part of this process. Everybody that's out there on the factory floor, everybody that's here in the front office, they're all invested in wanting to make GNH successful and wanting to grow this back to what it once was. And it's like taking an art class. I feel like you could you could charge for this, have people come in, yeah. you know, date night, a little wine, paint decoys. <laughs>